Hi everyone. Welcome to our Cloud Tagna YouTube channel module 4 of Learn Azure in 60 minute series. Today we are going to talk about Azure storage. In this module we will look at all aspects of Azure storage. Let's get started. Let's quickly recap what we have learned so far. First, we discussed how to get started with Azure. Then we talked about Azure global architecture, networking features. Today we will explore all aspects of Azure storage. After completing this module, you will have a good understanding of Azure storage components which helps you to architect your cloud solutions from storage perspective. Let's consider your cloud solution consists of several virtual machines and some cloud native applications. In any solutions, you need a space in the cloud to store your data. For example, your virtual machine require a disk to be attached to function and your applications may require a space to store your data in the cloud. And where can you save those data? That's the Azure storage account. Azure storage account gives you a space in the cloud and that you can use to store any data for your applications. And today we are going to understand all aspects of Azure storage account. Azure storage account offers several storage types such as blob, queue, table, files and disk and also storage account have some limitations. For example, each subscription can create up to 250 storage accounts and each account can support up to 5 petabytes of data and 20000 iops 10 gbps ingress traffic and 50 gbps egress traffic now let's slightly deep dive and understand what does it mean to end customer first let's understand what's blob storage and its real time use blob stands for binary large object and blob storage is a object storage solution in azure which is highly scalable imagine you have an application like youtube where users are uploading large volume of data in such scenarios your application need highly scalable space in the cloud to store any unstructured data to address this challenge you can use blob storage and blob storage lets you store any object inside the blob and you can access blob using rest api connections using the https://yourstorageaccount.blob.core.windows.net and this url is the blob access point and rest stands for representational state transfer in real world scenarios your applications make a rest api connections to this storage blob to update or retrieve any files inside the blob Let's move on to the Azure Queue Storage. Azure Storage Account also support queue storage for your applications. So message queuing predominantly used in application architecture to add more resiliency between the sender and receiver communications. Imagine your customers are placing an order in your retail application and your backend server has to process those transactions. If your application architected using message queuing resiliency model then even if the backend server experiencing any momentary outage the transaction will not fail instead the transaction stay in the queue until the receiver come back to online and this is the way you can increase your application resiliency and azure storage gives you an ability to achieve queuing service using the queue storage Let's move on to Azure Table Storage. Azure Table Storage is a NoSQL data store in the cloud. Imagine you have a healthcare mobile application which needs to locate some patient information, doctor information. To meet this requirement, you need a data store solution like a SQL that could be expensive. Azure Storage Account provides the native inexpensive NoSQL data store solution. which you can use to store large amount of structured data for your applications azure file storage is a simple serverless file server solution that eliminates the requirement of hosting the file server on top of windows server machines 
You can simply create a SMB file share on storage account and you can access this share from Windows or Linux computers. You can also integrate Azure files with on-premise file server to increase your file service availability. Let's move on to disk storage. When you are creating a virtual machine, you have to attach the disk. And there are two ways to provision the disk in the cloud that are unmanaged disk and managed disk. In unmanaged disk, your disk file such as VHD or virtual hard disk stored inside your storage account which is managed by you. And there are some challenges with unmanaged disk because of the storage account limitations. As we know, each storage account can support up to 20,000 IOPS. To address this challenge, Microsoft offers another service which is managed disk. In managed disk, you will get a predictable performance as storage account managed by Microsoft. Now let's take a look at the storage account from redundancy perspective. There are several redundancy options available. You have a flexibility to choose the desired options for your storage account. By default, your storage account is protected with LRS. LRS stands for Locally Redundant Storage. In LRS, three copies of your storage account placed in your primary region. And there is a synchronous replication between all the replicas. Next one, ZRS. ZRS stands for Zone Redundant Storage. In ZRS, the only difference is the storage account replica placed across availability zones. If your region supports availability zone and your workload placed across availability zones, then you can choose this option for greater availability. Now let's talk about GRS. GRS stands for Geo Redundant Storage. In GRS, storage accounts have a six copies. First three copy placed into your primary region and the next set of copies placed into secondary region. The sync between primary and secondary region will be asynchronous. If you are planning to protect your workload from regional disaster failure, then you can choose this option. It is important to note that you have no access to secondary copies unless there is any regional disaster activated. Azure Storage Account also supports read-only secondary replication model. Here you will have a full access on the primary region and read-only access on the secondary region. You can choose this replication model if you wish to have read-only access on the secondary copy for any specific data analytics requirements. Now let's take a look at the storage account from security perspective. To secure your storage account, here are the high level steps that you could follow. First, have the storage account created on the right region as per your data residency guidelines. Then it is important to secure the storage access key. So you can use the services like Key Vault to securely store your access key. You can also create a shared access signature to provide the restricted access for your applications. You can also use service endpoints to limit your storage account within selected network. Finally, you can also enable secure transfer so your data is remains protected during the transit as well. Now let's take a look at the storage account from management aspects. Imagine you have to transfer some data to your storage account. Typically, you can choose either online transfer or offline transfer depending on the data size. For online transfer, you can use tools like Storage Explorer, AZ Copy Command Line to perform any online data transfer if the data size is manageable. In case you have a huge data like hundreds of terabyte or petabytes of data and you are transferring over the network, it may take longer time depending on the data size. In such scenarios, you can also use offline data transfer using Azure Data Box or Azure Import Export Service. In Import Export Service, you can manually perform the offline data transfer using your hard disk. 
and then you can ship your hard disk to Azure Data Center. Microsoft team will connect the data back to your storage account. You will follow the same procedure for Azure Data Box as well. Azure Data Box is a Microsoft provided appliance. You can request this device through the Azure portal to perform any offline data transfer. Let's quickly summarize what we have learned. First, we discussed about what is storage account and its types. Then we talked about storage replications, securing your storage accounts. Finally, we saw some of the management and data transfer options available inside the storage account. Hope this information demystified some of the Azure storage concepts which you can apply when you are architecting your cloud solutions. We do provide cloud consulting, architectural reviews for our customer cloud solutions. If you need our support, please do contact us. In the next module, we will explore all aspects of virtual machine management. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss our updates. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next update.